Hello and welcome to today's uh, live um, uh, broadcast and uh, today I'm going to be talking about the uh, night of the broken glass. So I'm just turn this noise off. So I've got my I've got my computer in front of me as always, so I can actually read comments uh, as as and when they uh, come in. So um, so anyway, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to talk about the night of the uh, the, the uh, entries that Goebbels put into his uh, diary. Sorry, I said I was going to read the comments. I just it just occurred to me that I can't read comments because I can only have two. Having uh, have <laughs> I can't see I can't see the comments when I. Um, only got one screen here. Hang on, I'll make this a bit bigger. Sorry, I should have should have prepared that better. Right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually uh, say say what's in Goebbels's diary, and then um, then then I'll then I'll comment on it. And other people, those of you, can also comment on it as well. Of course, it would have been better to have actually done this. Uh, in German, uh, but that's not a realistic proposition. And it, actually, I would have liked to have had another person sitting with me who, um, who could have actually commented on, on the German. So there can be absolutely no doubt. Now, you may recall from yesterday and my um, uh, and the video uh, that I did on um, Jakob Grimminger that uh, I, I think this was entirely uh, the fault of Hitler, not just me, sorry, it's probably other people think this, is this, but I think the, the, the base, the common, the thing that we're commonly led to believe that Hitler was taken by surprise, that Goebbels had, uh, was responsible for this. He did it as a sort of a present for Hitler uh, because uh, Hitler was really cheesed off with him uh, because his wife Magda Goebbels had gone to Hitler to report that a Czech woman had invaded their marriage and and that um, her, her husband, Josef, was openly cavorting with Lida Barova. And to get himself back into Hitler's good books, uh, Goebbels arranged for this pogrom. I mean, that is, I think, uh, in short, what is the, the commonly held belief, which uh, I, I believe uh, that this diary uh, shows quite clearly uh, what uh, is going to happen. So what I'm going to do is... Uh, um, I don't have to look at the. I tell you, what, I'll just go through it, and if somebody makes a comment relating to the comment I've just made, because I'm effectively I'm just going to read it. Uh, then, then, then we'll we'll, we'll uh, uh, I'll stop it. Then I'll go through all the other comments, such as that the um, Greenspan, as I say here, was the grandson of the head of the German Reserve, uh, the American Federal Reserve or something uh, like that, which is someone who's written up there. Right. OK, so this is the diary of Josef Goebbels. OK, right. Good. This was written, incidentally, sometimes he refers to things. Um, it, so it's the, what happened the previous day. So he's written this the next day, uh, the 10th. Of November, but sometimes he refers things in the past tense and sometimes he refers things in the present tense. The text I put below in the description, uh, I've taken out his his spelling mistakes. So he, he spelt something, so it's, I've actually spelt it correctly, which he spelt it incorrectly. Um, but, uh, but because there was, and there's also a bit let a bit of text missing because I'm limited to five thousand characters. So uh, anyway. Good. So here, here we go. So yesterday, the traditional mark from the Burgerbräu, the Feldherren Halle, and then to Kölnicher Platz. It's a grey November day, immense crowds standing along the streets at the Kölnicher Platz, the great funeral celebration, very dignified and atmospheric. So this is the. Uh, OK, Charlie, uh, this is the um, 15th anniversary of the putsch of 1923 and um i've got actually i've got newsreel footage of this which i'll, I'll post that just occurred to me as i was preparing this and just thinking now um that uh, can actually show you and see what is actually happening in fact on the, on the video i did on grimminger there is some of the i think there's some in there i think or maybe i took it out can't remember now anyway hello page uh right uh, Goebbels kind of chatted with Lay. He's a good guy. He too is sometimes tired of everything and yearns for peace. He complains very much that he saw vet. He rarely meets the Führer. Robert Lay was the head of the 
D, uh, what's it called? DAF, what's that? The, the Labour Front. And um, he was the one who sort of organised things, not only along the Labour Front, but some of the things they did in their free time, such as, and I did a video on the Wilhelm Gusloff, the cruise liner, for example. And uh, Lay did, it was Lay who accompanied the um, King Edward VIII when he was no longer the King Edward VIII, when he did his 1937 trip around Germany. And um, that Lay liked a, a drop of booze from time to time. He smashed up a couple of cars. I'm talking of uh, uh, <laughs> smashing up a couple of cars. Then um, I'll get on to another person smashed up a car a little bit later. So, um, Lay hanged himself at Nuremberg. Um, uh, strangely enough, that uh, in Goebbels, um, Spare also writes an Inside the Third Reich, and he's now referring to a 1942 conversation with Lay. And in this, Lay also uh, um, uh, grumbles that uh, he can't, he doesn't have access to uh, uh, Hitler. All right, so Lutzer. Uh, now Lutzer grumbles mightily about the SS, not entirely wrongfully, but part. Partly also from competitive envy, Himmler has set up a lot. Now, uh, so during the pre the, the um, events on the uh, 9th of November, there'd be a big display with the SS and the SA and all the others laying wreaths and what have you. Lutzer was in charge of the SA and he took over because Röhm uh, was uh, murdered. Uh, and the night of the uh, Long Knives, uh, 30th of June 1934, and so um, then uh, Lutzer took over. Now, Lutzer was killed in a car crash. He allowed his son to drive the uh, a car, so he was in it, and so was his daughter. So And his son smashed the car up somewhere near Potsdam in 1943. And uh, so there's, now we've had two people who've smashed cars up. Uh, Right, next thing he says, work in the hotel. The expansion of the wireless and cable ready should now be actively taken on board. I want exact dates now. I don't know what Gilbert is referring to here. Uh, when he says he's working on a hotel, well, what hotel? Um, maybe this is the, his place of work, but I don't know what he's referring to. But next bit, I do know what he's referring to. The theatres in Sudeten uh, require large subsidies. I'll approve them right away to enable them to start playing again. Uh, Czechoslovakia, uh, the Sudeten region, had been annexed to the Third Reich only uh, a few weeks earlier. And so uh, now so, uh, the, probably it was the Czech state that had given the subsidies previously. And obviously the Czech state wasn't going to uh, do this any longer. So the, uh, the, new, um, the new owners, uh, the German state, had to actually do that. In that case, is, and as it, it was in Goebbels' remit to find the subsidies for propaganda. He had a huge budget. And his budget was something like that of the German Foreign Office, absolutely enormous. And uh, so anyway, so he, was, uh, he was going to do that. Anyway, right. Um, uh, in contrast to before, uh, too many take care of the press now. That doesn't work well either. I'll reduce that a bit. So in any words, he's complaining that there's too many people uh, interested in, uh, in the press and what have you. Okay, now we get on to the bits referring to the events I'm going to describe. Um, the condition of the diplomat rat in Paris shot by the Jew is still very serious. The German press is going strong. Now, uh, in this case, he's written this on the 10th, so in this case, the uh, rat was dead by this time, uh, but that's the date he's put on it, so he probably wrote this the uh, previous day as things were uh, beginning to uh, happen. Uh, so he probably wrote this in the evening. Now, um, the speech of the Führer in the Bürgerbräu uh, finds a very strong echo at home and abroad. So he thinks that the um, living in an echo chamber, that so the, uh, the radio uh, which had reported in other countries what Hitler had said in the, in the evening uh, and that uh, he was coming back to him, and so he thinks lots of people are reporting on it because I'm, I'm sure there was lots of articles about it. Now, Heldorf completely disarms the Jews in Berlin. They will also have to be prepared for a lot of other things. 
So Heldorf, Count Heldorf, was the uh, chief of police in Berlin. He was a particularly unpleasant character. He um, organized pogrom, first pogrom, he got so, well, pogrom's probably not the right word, but it was often called the Kurfürsten, Kurfürsten Dam riot, 1934, 1931, sorry, and then there's the one in 1934, uh, where, uh, when um, attacking Jewish people in the streets, and the first time, obviously, the police reacted, but when the Nazis actually took over, then, then it, they didn't bother um, a, any longer. Um, so, the uh, thing with Heldorf is, though, he actually joined the resistance, and you can see him in the film, um, what's the film called? Valkyrie. Uh, and um, you see him there, he's, he's, he was in the resistance, indeed, he was hanged. Uh, he was put on trial on the 7th or 8th of August, uh, 1944, and he was hanged, and he had to watch everybody else being hanged before him. So, uh, Heldorf, uh, Hitler said about him, what, he's a drunk, I used to pay all his gambling debts, of which he had many, uh, but he was a very, he was a particularly uh, obnoxious uh, character. Now, um, the Jewish population had had their gun, the, the people had been had gun permits, had been, had, had them taken away from them. And for those of people who are in favour of the uh, Second Amendment in the United States about people should have guns, well, in this case, this is one of the very few, in my opinion, cases where uh, they, they may have a, an argument. Um, anyway, it's uh, just uh, that my opinion. Right. Um, OK. Moscow proclaims once again the world revolution under the great and wise, <clears throat> sorry, wise world marshal stalin but that all sounds so hollow moscow lost all its prestige in the czech crisis this cannot be caught up with phrases so um this uh, incidentally it's coming off the point a bit even though i'm reading the diary of uh, goebbels here and so uh stalin's um was not consulted over the uh czech crisis which of course the nazis uh brought about now, the Soviet Union had an alliance with, the, with Czechoslovakia, uh, but um, Soviet Union was not invited to the conferences related to the division of Czechoslovakia. It was ignored. And this, even today, is one of the arguments put forward by Putin uh, that, uh, that uh, to justify the later alliance between the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany, because it claims that the West had uh, pushed it into the into the camp but here we can see even in Goebbels's diary on November 1938 he's he's saying that the Soviet Union has lost its prestige as, as a result of this anyway I'll continue uh worked this afternoon my new book that makes real fun now Dietrich grumbled about Burns article I've written at my request but more against Burns good that Burns is going to have a new department this is just a little bit of um uh, gossip from his uh, the propaganda ministry. Uh, Otto Dietrich worked in the propaganda ministry. Bernd, whose name first name I've just forgotten, Bernd was a journalist uh, who worked. It was a protege of Goebbels, and uh, so he was actually just promoted to somewhere else at the um, at the instigation of Fritzsche. And uh, so, so anyway, so he'd obviously asked Byrne to write an article. I don't know which article he'd written uh, for him. And Dietrich didn't like it. But what the articles that they wrote, because this affected uh, so many people, studied them to understand what the Nazis were trying to do. And so they obviously he'd written something which somebody thought not, not important. Um, in Kassel and Dessau, large demonstrations against the Jews. Fire was set to synagogues. Sorry, synagogues were set on fire and shops demolished. In the afternoon, the death of the German diplomat von Rath was reported. Now it's ready. So, OK, so von Rath died. This has been reported on the radio. And so in the Nazis have quickly, the local Nazi party in Kassel and Dessau, which has organized this. And this organization comes from one, uh, I think, uh, Goebbels must have permitted this to be on the radio. And the SA uh, in smaller towns such as Dessau and Kassel, so there have been local SA people, but uh, Victor Lutzer, who was, was earlier mentioned, uh, must have been involved in this as the boss of the SA. 
so as far as th those they're concerned, um, uh, that comes from Lutzer. Did Lutzer get his orders directly from Hitler? Well, there's no one else he could have got his orders from Hitler. Uh, but anyway, let's go. Let's go on. Uh, Goebbels writes, I go to the reception of the party in the old town hall. It was very crowded. I bring the matter to the Führer. He decides, let the demonstrations go on, withdraw the police. The Jews should get to feel the anger of the people. That's right. I'll give appropriate instructions to the police and party. Then I'll talk briefly before the party leaders in this sense. Stormy applause. Everyone rushes to the telephones. Now the people are going to, sorry, now the people is going to take action. So, uh, in this case here, we've got uh, Goebbels is directly saying that uh, it is Hitler who's who's made the decision. It, it couldn't be it couldn't be more clear. Um, so he decides that the demonstrations go on. Full stop. Withdraw the police. Uh, now, who who's or is that coming from Goebbels or is it coming from Hitler? Um, uh, well, that you should get the feeling of the people. That's right. Um, to me, I think that that's coming from that's com that's coming from Hitler. Uh, nothing, nothing more. Some wimps hesitate, but I keep pushing on. We can't leave unanswered this cowardly murder. Let things take their course. The Stoss troop Hitler starts right away to clean up in Munich. That happens straight away. A synagogue is smashed to, to nothing. I tried to save it from the fire, but that fails. Right, okay, he's very clearly, he writes the word Stostrup, right? So Stostrup Hitler uh, is, is not, I mean, it, it couldn't, it couldn't be clearer. And remember that the, the Stostrup, the old guard uh, who uh, had been uh, with Hitler for uh, some of them, um, well, 18 years. Uh, and um, these characters, the Stostrup, which had been, okay, been banned after November 1923, not reformed, but the word clearly here, the storm troopers, the, uh, not storm troopers, which say the shock troopers, shock group, uh, clearly appears here. Okay, so meanwhile, I talked with Schwarz about financial issues, with Stryker about the Jewish question, with Ribbentrop about foreign policy. He too thinks that Czechoslovakia can now be taken by the cold way. We'll just have to start well. Schwalkowski wants this. If others want it too, it's impossible to say, right? So, okay, now uh, the previous, um, no, September was one of six weeks or so earlier, uh, they'd taken the Sudetenland and now already... Um, Goebbels is talking about taking the rest of Bohemia and Moravia, the Czechia bit of it. Uh, Schwarz was the Zavov. Schwarz was the uh, Nazi Party treasurer. He, he was um, he's one of the oldest Nazis, if not the if not the oldest at the at the top. I can't think of him off the top of my head uh, who was older than he was. And he, he lasted at the end of the war. He was just the treasurer, so he more or less got away with it. Stryker, Julius Stryker, was hanged at uh, Nuremberg. He was the uh, uh, publisher of uh, the People's um, Alfred Angemar Burns. Did I say that one? Sorry, anyway, sorry, it's, it's gone. <laughs> um, and um, sorry, sorry, just looking at Zing's comment there. Sorry. And um, and uh, uh, so it put me off now because I forgot his first names, uh, and um, uh, it, it, no, not to Angrief. Angrief was the, the Berlin paper. It was the uh, Volkischer Beobachter, the uh, the Folkish Observer, the People's Observer, something like that. Um, and uh, Chalkovsky was the head of the Czech uh, diplomatic corps. And um, he had, he's, he's very a very tragic character because he was sort of uh, many people with the Czechoslovakian state uh, in the interwar period um, were um, der Sturmer. Sorry, did I say uh, anyway? Sorry, der Sturmer was not der Volkischer Beobachter. Sorry, uh, Stryker ran der Sturmer because I forgot the first name of uh, Burnt and that that put me off everything else. <laughs> um, uh, Chvalkovsky, a, a tragic character, and he sort of, uh, when uh, Czechoslovakia was dismembered, he thought the best course of action was to sort of to see the best he could get from the Germans, which wasn't particularly good. He was killed in a bombing raid 
in uh, February of 1945 in Berlin. And um, anyway, so uh, Goebbels continues with Wagner to the Gau, the Gau meaning the local uh, Nazi party headquarters. Um, I issue a precise circular letter explaining what can and can't be done. Wagner gets cold feet and trembles for his Jewish shops, but I will not be confused. Meanwhile, the shock troop does its job, which they do perfectly. I instruct Wagner in Berlin to have the synagogue and Fasen and Strasse smashed. He just keeps saying, what a great job, or honourable assignment. All right, so uh, Wagner is the uh, boss at Munich. He's a Nazi party boss. It was at his funeral in 1944 where allegedly the blood flag was shown for the last time, but I don't think it was, but that's what you'll find in most books. I think it was actually out a bit uh, a bit later. Um, he, uh, he when Goebbels says he's getting cold feet, he obviously just wants to see his town smashed or his city smashed up. And so uh, it, when I think that he was consulted about this, he agreed, and then he started thinking of the consequences, and so he he wants that he wants to start get get getting getting out of it. But once more, you see the word Stostrup is used yet again. The shock troop does its job, which they do perfectly. All right. So um, and uh, anyway, uh, and he instructed Vactor, uh in Berlin, have the synagogue and fasten and stars are smashed up. Right now, Goebbels was uh, in charge in Berlin. He wasn't in charge in Munich, and so if he decided to smash up the uh, synagogue and fasten and stars or any others, uh, he could uh, presumably in Berlin he might have felt he had the uh, authority to do that. If but uh, even there, I think Hitler would have to give him the green light. But as far as Munich's concerned, um, if He's for it and Wagner's against it. Then one of the two, either if, um, Goebbels can't overrule Wagner in his own city. So the, clearly the decisions come from somebody. And he mentions once more Stostrup. Uh, so that is clear that uh, the order is coming from Hitler. So what I'm suggesting, well, not just me, you know, there's a suggestion, it's not it wasn't my idea, uh, is that when they went to the comradeship evening, Hitler's sitting at the head of the table, you've got these old boys around him at 38, 40, whatever it was, uh, including Grimminger, and there Hitler told them what to do. Uh, to me, this is, and they start the ball rolling, and get, get um, that's that's what I believe, right? Wachter was uh, Werner Wachter. He was one of uh, Goebbels's men in, uh, in uh, once more uh, in in Berlin. He'd been with them there for some time. Um, born nineteen hundred and two, he um, he was caught. Well, it's not known what happened to him. He was one of these people who was declared dead. He might have been shot by the uh, by the Soviets. He might have been captured and shot. I don't know, but I think he disappeared in Berlin anyway. And uh, in 1945, mean after that, he wasn't seen ever again. Goebbels continues, SS swearing in in front of the Feldherrenhalle at midnight, very solemn and atmospheric, the Führer speaks to his men, going to the heart. Okay, so next uh, goes on. I want to go to the hotel, then I see the sky blood red. The synagogue is burning immediately to the Gau. No one yet knows anything there. We only permit it. Yeah, we only permit it to be extinguished as far as is necessary for the to save the surrounding buildings. Otherwise, let it burn down. The shock troop does its terrible job. Messages are now coming from all over the Reich. Fifty, then seven, probably seventy synagogues are set on fire. The Führer has ordered that two, probably twenty to thirty thousand Jews be arrested immediately. That will work. They should all see now what. Uh, that our patience is exhausted. So, Goebbels goes to this swearing-in ceremony uh, at the um, Feldherrenhalle uh, for the for the SS. <coughs> Sorry. And then, uh, so Hitler's speaking to them. He leaves this ceremony, which is relatively quick. I mean, it was pretty late at night in any case. And he sees the skies lit up with the flames. So there were some people who didn't go to Feldherrenhalle, uh, but they were out uh, burning down uh, buildings in Munich. And um, 
And he states, furthermore, he goes to the Gau, so it's, it's Wagner's place and no one has a clue what's going on. So clearly, Wagner uh, has not given the order. Somebody else has done it. And that's got to be somebody who's overruled Wagner. And, um, and, so, and somebody's also given the fire, ins uh, fire brigade instructions uh, not to... Uh, not to put, extinguish the fires in, in for the uh, in the synagogues, only the uh, buildings uh, close by. And now this message is coming from all over the place, and this is happening all all, all over the all over the country, not just in Munich. Uh, so clearly, now I believe it's the SA who's done that. Uh, Lutzer was, I, I I would suggest, is probably uh, re responsible. And Hitler's now give it clearly. He says. Utterly clearly, Führer has ordered that twenty to thirty thousand Jews be arrested immediately. There is no question of who the order is coming from. Okay, I continue. Wagner is still a bit weak, but I won't let go. Wagner reports to me, command executed. We go with Sharp to the Kunstler Club to wait for further messages. In Berlin, five and fifteen synagogues burned down. Now the people's anger is raging. We do nothing about it during the night, and I don't want to do anything. Let it run. So. Uh, Wagner in Munich is still not committed to uh, the destruction of uh, parts of Munich. Uh, Wagner, however, in Berlin has done what he and in Fassenenstrasse, Fa, uh, on uh, Fassenenstrasse synagogue is the one which is completely smashed up. With the, the, that I used as the um, the avatar for the video yesterday. That's Fassenenstrasse. The, uh, today's avatar is uh, was taken from a book. Uh, uh, showing the uh, synagogue in um, in in, Mun uh, in Munich, the uh, old one. Um, uh, so uh, now um, we got Schaub. Schaub was the um, adjutant of Hitler, and he was by this time in charge of the Stoss trooper. He wasn't always in charge because that formed to other people earlier. But by this time, I think he's the one here. Uh, who is he effectively is in command and uh, as I said yesterday he was a person who would not have done something to uh, annoy Hitler we know that he was in tears and crying over an incident that happened in Dessau only uh, a few weeks earlier when he changed the order of parade of the Hitler youth and Hitler demoted him by two ranks uh, for this uh, so he really wanted to um, grovel up to up to Hitler. Uh, something totally devoted to Hitler, even to the uh, the very end. It was him who uh, burned Hitler's papers um, in uh, when in April nineteen forty five. So uh, the Kunstler Club. Um, I don't know. I suppose that's some kind of a cafe or, or, or the like uh, or the likes. Um, uh, right, Schaub is in full swing. His old shock troops, his old shock troop past is awakening. Once more, the word is used. Who is doing it? Shock troops. Uh, utter, utterly clear. Right, so there's no doubt. When I drive the hotel, window plate panes fly to feet pieces. Bravo, bravo, the synagogues burn in all the big cities. German property is not endangered. Well, like how, how could he possibly say something like that? There's a big fire on. There's nothing special to do in, anymore at the moment. I try to sleep for a few hours. The re first reports arrived early in the morning. There was a terrible rage, as expected. The whole nation is in turmoil. This death is proving costly for, for the Jews. In the future, the dear Jews will think twice before shooting down German diplomats. And that is what it was all about. So, um, Goebbels is now claiming that this pogrom was because of the shooting of Von Rath in Paris. And as I sort of explained yesterday, his death may have been caused, um, may have been caused by medical malpractice. Anyway, by the doctors that Hitler sent, sent to him. Um, that is uh, that's the opinion of a surgeon. It's it's not mine. I wouldn't, wouldn't I'd be in no way to say what what is medical bowel practice and not. Um, okay, now we've got some other things about world, world uh, events. 
Um, I still have a lot of work to do. Yannings absolutely wants to save his movie, but I cannot help him either. Yannings was a famous actor uh, of the uh, of the time. Emil Yannings, I think he tried to make it in the United States uh, because he was a bit, um, he had done the United States, but when they started doing talking films, his English wasn't up to it. He had a funny act, well, he had a German accent, same as I've got a British accent or a Newcastle accent, and um, so uh, it, it didn't it didn't quite work. The radio has risen to over ten thousand. Sorry, the radio has risen to over 10 million listeners. A fantastic result, which is very pleasing. Yeah, 20, 10 million people on uh, listening to the radio. That's not too bad. I give instructions that in the area, the whole Ministry of Prohibitions may only be issued by me. Otherwise, not too much nonsense happens. So only Goebbels can censor things. Uh, for the 80th birthday of the Kaiser, people want to make commemorations and write articles of praise. I would agree if the side against the Kaiser could speak too. But then the uh, reactionaries twitch back. Roosevelt's friends are beating the American elections in many places, strong success of Republicans, but that still does not say anything to Roosevelt himself. London drops the partition of Palestine. The English won't get away with that now. Speech of the Führer in the Burger Broy uh, encounters a very aggressive echo in London and Paris. That was to be expected. If you, ta if you tap the warmongers' fingers, they will scream. It's raining. New messages all morning. I think the Führer... I think with the Führer... I th sorry. I, so I'm going to translate this now. <laughs> um, I think uh, I think about what actions to take now uh, with the Führer. Should we let them go smashing the place up, or should we stop it? That is the question now. So that is his diary for Thursday, November the tenth, nineteen thirty-eight. And if anybody believes that Hitler was not responsible. For this pogrom, then let them now present the uh, the suggestions that it was all Goebbels or somebody else's idea. Um, I will sorry, just go back to the comments here. So, um, so Daniel, happy New Year, and looking forward to this one. Well, well, I hope it was uh, hope it was good. So Charlie writes, the night of the broken class was that retaliation for the Jewish man who killed the German diplomat in Paris. I think his name was greenspan his grandson went to run for the federal reserve in america and no he didn't that's absolutely incorrect um herschel greenspan does not appear to be any relation to alan greenspan yeah sorry it says zing that's correct um bing said hello um hello hello john hello what charlie was just asking uh hello page hello ian uh, hello, Mohammed, and uh, Ian notices that I'm in a house. How unusual! Yes, I will be in a house for another six days, and then I'll be in a, a in a proper home uh, again. And um, and uh, John writes that uh, Leigh had a centerfold wife who he drove to suicide. Uh huh. And um, uh, no, Charlie writes Grinspan finished his twenty year sentence, then emigrated to. America, no, he didn't. The Gunspan disappeared in 1943. Yeah, last seen in Sachsenhausen. Um, Neela writes, uh, sorry, hello, Neela, hello, Annie, uh, hello, Mike. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it would be, uh, now here's a good point here, and this this is all things a big, right? It's big, but you think they'd have thrown Goebbels in a, a camp because he was deformed. And this is this whole Aryan ideology. I mean, somebody said about Himmler, I wouldn't go on about a racial um, appearance if I looked like uh, Himmler. And um, it, it's quite absurd, this idea of this tall, blonde, blue eyed um, ideal. I mean, look, look, look at Hitler, Goebbels. Um, <laughs> the, the only one that sort of remotely looked this way was Heydrich. Um, it's, 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 to it's totally ridiculous. Um, anyway, and. Um, uh, so John writes, it's rumoured that Grinspan and Von Rath had a gay relationship. It is indeed that was going to be the defence of trial, uh, and uh, if it had gone to trial, and that was possibly, well, should have person, obviously should have first have gone to trial in France, because that's where it happened, he was arrested by the French. In fact, he didn't even try to escape. Uh, he, he hung around and waited for the police to arrest him. And so he'd done it to make a political point, and he'd made his point, and so he hung around waiting to be arrested. Um... Uh, anyway, so Big says somebody wasn't a veteran, and Happy New Year, and um, oh, oh, Aaron says that Castle is an amazing city. Right, I have not been. I made a joke up about Castle. Only my only experience of Castle was when the um, 
the uh, sat nav sent me through castle to sent me through the center instead of through through the motorways that was a sigic which i've now given up on despite having bought the uh the paid paid use of it but uh and maybe it was my fault maybe i'd uh programmed it incorrectly do quickest route or some or shortest route or something like that but anyway so so that's my only um about uh castle um right now the uh, uh david writes the german insurance companies took a hit well they Actually, they didn't know it. I would say, yes, I'd say that's correct. But, but it's not because the, the insurance companies should have paid for the damage. But the money that they had to pay was um, stolen by the state. Uh, confiscated, if you want to use a different word. And it was uh, uh, some of the insurance leaders turned up to see um, Goering. And Goering said something. They, they only wanted them to pay 80%. And he said, they, they complained, and he said something like this. So if some Santa Claus uh, comes to you in my, in my rather corpulent shape and offers you 20% or whatever it was, a huge sum of money, I think you should think that's a really good deal. And so um, the insurance industry um, did take a hit, but the money was stolen by, by, the, by the state. Uh, Ian says police told to take documentation from the synagogues, and um, right uh, the uh, sorry, I do some corrections from me. Yeah, you, you, Julius Stryker was the gal leader of Franconia. Yeah, he was. Uh, okay, and Big Boy writes Hans Vestemar is a great movie. I've never heard of it, um, so I certainly haven't seen it either. Uh, Josef Goebbels was the only one in his in the one stuck with Hitler to the end, the most loyal. Yes, he was, wasn't he? Really, because uh, Hitler certainly deserted him. Uh, and hello, Acton. Hello, David. Yeah, sorry. And um, Neela asks, how were they asking if they should stop it if they were part of it? Ah, yes, I can answer this question. No, the. Um, this is this is a problem sort of seeing this out of context. This would be better as sort of a feature film where things were going on than reading the the the, the diary. Um, the question was that they started these smashing these places up. Uh, okay, first of all in Munich and then in other places in Germany. And so this was going on during the night. Some places might have continued on to the morning. And the question was in the following morning, should they allow it to continue or should they now say that's it? You've had your fun. Uh, uh, we're going to stop it. So that was the question that Goebbels was asking on the uh, on the tenth in the early morn uh, in the morning. Uh, can't have been that early because if Hitler, he was asked, talking to Hitler, Hitler was noted for not getting up all that early anyway. Although by this at this time he still wasn't getting up at sort of midday. Uh, he was still sort of getting up at slightly late, but not too late. Uh, and, and Karen says that she met a Heinrich in South Aussie who acts like a Nazi. Okay. All right, very good. Okay, then. So, there we have it. That is the um, situation. Uh, um, I believe uh, what happened, I believe that Hitler was entirely responsible for this. Um, there are others who don't believe this, and but the... Uh, uh, the the argument is is that this is not Goebbels's diary. This is I mean this is what this is a forgery. I, I don't know uh, anything uh, other other than that. So uh, I I can't um, I can't. But what I'll do tomorrow is I'll do the same one again. Sorry, I'll do the uh, I'm gonna do the same one again. I'll do the next day uh, in Goebbels's diary, and we'll see what actually is actually written in. In that, it's much easier for me to do something like this because if I done a, if I did this as a as a video or such, you know, it takes two or three days. Um, also, things happened yesterday. I was um, I spent most of yesterday uh, doing the diary of Himmler's wife. I was translating it, and then then I found a translation. To, when I'd almost finished it, I found a translation. The only reason I found a translation as well because there was. There was a place, uh, and I started looking up the which I didn't know where it was was mentioned, and I was trying to find it, and um, it was because of that search 
but I found the translation and what a what a waste of time I could <laughs> so um anyway uh, the thing is that it's also with putting things together uh, you know when you sort of dictate things and you have to keep repeating yourself because there's noises outside or some or something like that or because I make mistakes and when I'm, if I sit here and I say something and it's a mistake okay I've just said it off the top of my head I don't think people uh, uh, are, are too bothered but anyway good so, uh, so Ian says he was delighted to catch a live stream. Happy to see some of the videos achieve high viewing numbers. Well, I'll, uh, yeah, but if you get some, get a few, slightly higher, that would be that, that would be good. Um, uh, December was the second best month ever on this channel. Um, uh, Neela, thank you. Uh, John, uh, I think Goebbels diary is authentic. I have no doubt that the Goebbels diary is authentic. Um, none whatsoever. No, uh, none whatsoever. Uh, um the uh, hitler's diary isn't isn't, isn't so uh, uh it, it isn't authentic oh and on that subject um i had this idea because i uh, the the contents of his hitler diaries uh were made public uh, this year it was it, it was the 40th anniversary uh and um i read it i read parts of it oh, it is awful uh, it beats me out. Anybody could even think it was even genuine. I mean, I do appreciate the ex excitement of finding something, but it is it is dreadful trying to read it. it, it I, I even thought I picked out some parts. I thought I'd pick out a couple of dates. Which I think are remotely interesting, and um, obviously it was you know, it was forgery written by uh, Conrad Kujau, but. Um, it's so badly written. Anyway, uh, that that's it. Anyway, sorry. And uh, uh, oh, hey, here's a good one. Um, Bookcase twenty two says uh, I bought the early Goebbels diaries last year. It was expensive, as it seemed to be rather scarce. Wow, what year was that? Uh, believed it was best not to write some things down. Wow, that is really. Uh, so I bought actually a um, sort of an original uh, uh, Mein Kampf, but in Spanish. So it was this was done under the Franco regime, and uh, I don't even know where it is now. But it's um, uh, it's been, it'll be somewhere in some box in somebody's attic somewhere. You know, so sort of, as as I really don't have a, a sort of a permanent place to be any longer. And um, anyway, it might even be in my own house. I don't know. Uh, so, so Jay is asking where am I staying? I'm staying in London, Jay, and uh, so I'll be back. I'll be in Heilbronn on. Uh, I'll be in Baden Baden Heilbronn next Monday. Then I'll be in Stuttgart uh, for a couple of weeks. Um, as from I don't know Wednesday probably. Ah, uh, yeah, a couple of weeks I'll be in Stuttgart. And uh, Karen says she always likes my work. That's very nice. Thank you. Uh, Big Bird bought a copy of Mein Kampf off Amazon. I don't think Ayn Kampf actually is all that bad. People actually not. Uh, I mean, it's uh, sorry. Uh, it's in two parts. The second part with this is is really quite difficult to 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 read. But the first part, there's parts in it which are quite interesting. And um, you know, when I again, was it the Grimming? No, it was the Coburg. Coburg. So in the Grimminger video, I did a little bit on, but on a quote, I think I quoted Hitler in that one. Uh, but in in the Coburg video, I quoted Hitler uh, verbatim. Uh, and um, so some of the things he actually describes are quite interesting, I, I think. So thanks, Mohammed. Thank you. <laughs> uh, good. Okay then. So thanks very much. Okay. Sorry. Bookcase. It was published in '62 and had an intro by uh, Alan Bullock. He covers years 1925, 1926. Well done. Okay. Okay. Very good. You know, when we have the hit, some of the history books, actually, the hi the history as history books from say from the early '60s. Uh, often, because we, we have more information now, because we have a archives which have open, opened up and there's been more work done, so it's more, uh, you look back, okay, if a book was written before 1980, you think, oh, well, no, I'm not going to find anything interesting in this, or, or something like that. But with with, uh, with the original documentation, such, such as something like this, I think this is quite a uh, thing that, well, it's not exactly original documentation, but uh, but it's, uh, it's earlier stuff. Uh, okay, thank you very, thank you very much. Oh, hang on, was it the Bowman letters? And that was quite pricey too. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, what a what a selection there. You know, this is one of the problems about living in a motorhome. You can't you, you can't keep things like this. Um, occasionally, I must admit, it hasn't happened to me for a while. I've seen a book that I really wanted to buy, and no, it is. It did. It happened to me in Germany. Um, I was at the resistance. Um, 
the a monument to the resistance in uh, Stockenberger Strasse, and they had oh, I really there was a there was this it was uh, on on the twentieth of July where people were. I really wanted to buy it. I thought, oh, what am I going to do with a big thing like that? And it, it was quite expensive because only sort of these low run academic type things. But um, oh, I thought it was really good. Um, yeah, yeah. John says Borman's brother life lived to a ripe old age, and he wasn't. Who wasn't a veteran? Uh, um, I have three vintage copies of Mein Kampf too. In what language you have them in bookcase and in um, date of publication? Uh, uh, so much online today, or should I? Says David, can't read. Sorry, I can't read. It needs to go a bit for somebody else has to make. Um, okay, waiting for bookcases. Um, response as to find out when his copies of Mein Kampf actually date to. Um, good, I'm the only person I know has actually read both Mein Kampf, I also read Capital as well. Uh, yeah, no, it's really, it's, it's hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's neither. It's really hard. It is hard going, but it's not. Um, it's not this work of uh, verbal pornography that it's made out to be. I mean, it is clearly written by somebody who's not entirely there. And one thing about the writing of Mein Kampf, because this is another thing which is commonly said, but commonly the Hitler, sorry, him, it was named Hess, was the uh, secretary of Hitler. Uh, that isn't true. Uh, Hitler would type it himself, and this is clear. Because other people were complaining at him banging away at the typewriter at night. They weren't complaining at Hess banging away, complaining at Hitler banging away. So Hitler clearly wrote it. But Hitler wanted to read parts to it. And, and the others who were in Landsberg prison with him didn't want, weren't really interested. And so, uh, but only Hiss, Hess, sorry, Hess showed any interest. And so that's why it's, it's often said that Hess, Hess was hit, his secretary. He wasn't. So I don't know even know if you could type, never mind anything else. I think Hitler learned to type because I think it was that woman, was uh, Beckstein, who brought him the type, got him the typewriter, if um, my memory serves me correctly. And uh, so he sort of tried that with two two fingers. Plop, plop. I don't know if people can type doing that. I type with both my hands. I learned to do that at school. <laughs> anyway, good. Thanks very much. Okay. Tomorrow night, same time. Uh... Uh, film on um, on 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 Crystal Nag. So thank you very much for now, and uh, bye for now. <laughs> oh, one night thirty four truncated. Wow, nineteen thirty four.